Plutus Sports Analytics is a company based on minimizing the uncertainty in sports betting to help you maximize your profit. Newfoundland's first sports analytics team provides daily predictions for all major league sports so you can win big. Whether you want to hit MLB picks out of the park or get a slam dunk on your NBA betting tickets, Plutus is a company of choice. Head to PlutusSportsAnalytics.com. That is P-L-U-T-U-S Sports analytics.com and use promo code JSP20 for 20% off their deadly service. And now let's get to the show. Welcome back, everybody, to the episode of the Jay Stevens Podcast. This is uh, episode number 175, dedicated to a man who on February 15th, 1998, won his only Daytona 500. Mr. Dale Earnhardt. And as always, thank you for listening and downloading another episode of the podcast. On today's episode, we talk a little bit about what is going on right now with the Houston Texans. Mark Cuban does want to play the anthem. The NBA says he has to. And Chris Hogan might have other plans coming up that are not playing in the NFL. But we begin today's show talking about something that happened towards the end of the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 55, when Antoine Winfield Jr. gave Tyreek Smith, Tyreek Hill, not Tyreek Smith, different player, gave Tyreek Hill a piece of his own medicine. A little over four minutes left in the game. Tyreek Hill had a pass thrown towards his way. Antoine Winfield Jr. properly defended the pass, knocked it down, and then right in the face of Tyreek Hill, gave that man the peace sign. Hey, y'all, I loved it. I love watching it. Gave that man a peace sign. Let's go back to earlier in the season. Chiefs and Buccaneers played. Tyreek Hill torched, literally torched the Buccaneers. And running up the right sideline, he gave Antoine Winfield Jr. his signature peace sign right in the face of Winfield Jr., a rookie in the National Football League. Well, at the end of the Super Bowl, I am sure Winfield Jr. had that play in his mind. I am sure that he was thinking, how can I get this man back? What can I do to properly defend the pass to where I am there, he's on the ground, he doesn't have the ball in his hand, the ball's on the ground because I did my job so that I can really give Tyreek Hill a piece of his own medicine. You defend the pass. Ball's on the ground. Tyreek Hill's really upset because he knows he's about to lose lose the biggest game of the year. And his team will not go back to back as champions in the National Football League. Did his job. Peace sign. Basically, game was game over. Game was already over, but that somewhat solidif- solidified it. The NFL didn't like it. Mm-mm. They, they didn't have a problem with Tyreek Hill doing it early, earlier in the season, and it wasn't the first time that Tyreek Hill had given somebody the peace sign. The NFL did not like Winfield Jr. Said, no, 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 no. We don't like that move. We don't like that maneuver. We don't like that gesture. $7,815, that'll be the price and the penalty you will pay in a fine for doing that during that game. Um, okay, NFL, Um, just scratching my head. I'm trying to figure out what y'all thinking. So, Tyreek Hill... Because he, he maybe because he's not a rookie, maybe because he makes you guys so much money, uh, maybe because the Chiefs team is so good and they do get a lot of attention, a lot of eyeballs when they're playing the football on TV. Is that why you don't find Tyreek Hill for doing this over and over and over again? But when a rookie at the end of the game, when he does it in the face of Tyreek Hill, oh my goodness, it's taunting. But during other portions of the game, is it not taunting? Come on, guys. It's supposed to be a fun league, a fun game. These are people that are crazy talented playing a child's game that are getting paid millions, millions, millions of dollars. And all of a sudden, because y'all want to y'all wanna stop the party, y'all not happy because Winfield Jr. did it, so what do you do? Lay down a $7,800 fine. To me, that's a slap in the face. Yes, he's a rookie. Yes, he's not making, he's on his rookie deal. He's not, he's not on his second contract. So he is kind of, he is limited in his funds. And I'm sure he has endorsements and other things off the field that are allowing him to bring in more money. But $7,800, man, $7,815? Are you, are we, are we serious right now? Are we serious? 
No, no, NFL. No, no, no. Let that boy have some fun. Let that boy have some fun. It's kind of like the kid in school that is a pest. He picks on everybody. He's a jokester, but he never gets in trouble for doing what he does on a regular basis. So he's messing with somebody. He's messing with you, messing with you, poking at you, getting under your skin. He's like, hey, man, leave me alone, man. Leave me alone, man. Leave me alone. And he just keeps going. He keeps going. He keeps going because he knows he won't get in trouble. Well, all of a sudden, you retaliate and you get in trouble when you do one gesture and the other person did 5,000. This is what this situation to me reminds me of. Tyree Kill, a repeat offender. Ha! The NFL has no problem with it. A $7,800 fine for putting the peace sign in somebody's face? It's not the worst thing that has happened on a football field this year. Let's go ahead and take a trip to Houston, Texas. Because the Texans have decided to release J.J. Watt because J.J. Watt wants out of town. But I think this city of Houston and their sports teams have bigger problems than just J.J. Watt wanting to leave. First, it was Deshaun Watson. Deshaun wants out of town. He wants to get traded. Shortly after, he ended up signing a long-term contract with the Texans. He's disgruntled. He is upset, and he wants out. Now, it's J.J. Watt. And that makes a lot of people wonder, since the franchise player, the face of the franchise, since he wants out of town, well, is it really as bad as it seems? J.J. Watt, a three-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, five-time first-team All-Pro, five-time Pro Bowler, he, what he has done with that franchise, it's amazing. It's things that if a player can get just one of those awards just once, they'll be very, very happy. But J.J. Watt, he's upset. He wants to leave, and I'm sure he wants to win a ring. And he knows it's going to be very, very hard to win that ring in Houston, so he wants to get out of town. The Texans, they're like the team. You know about them. You know the players that they have. You know they're talented. But from the top, the organization, it's a, it's a disaster. It's a dumpster fire, as some people might call it. They can't get things right. They can't figure out how to hire the right people. They can't figure out how to promote people into the right positions. Maybe promote them, but you're promoting people that aren't good at their current job to give them more responsibility. We all remember, go back to last offseason when the Texans ended up trading DeAndre Hopkins and bringing in a guy who's always hurt and getting rid of some draft picks as well. Shortly after that, shortly before this time, Bill O'Brien was promoted from just being the head coach to being a head coach and general manager. Somebody help me make sure or help me understand how this makes any sense. You have a head coach, and I'm not just saying the playoff disaster and debacle when they were up 24-0 and then the Chiefs came back and won the game. I'm not going that because I don't believe one game is enough to get somebody fired. There should be a track record of things that go wrong or a track record of things that maybe internally in the office or behind closed doors, things don't go well before saying we need to part ways with this individual. Bill O'Brien has shown he's not a good head coach, or he's not a good, good enough head coach at the NFL level. He, he can win you some games, maybe win you a division, t divisional title. But when it comes to him leading a franchise, wearing multiple hats inside that franchise, I don't believe that Bill O'Brien was that guy. You promote him, you make some bad moves. Ultimately, there are players inside of your program, or in for program, I guess college, inside of your franchise that ultimately come down and test positive for PEDs. Now, that does not fall on you, but when you're the head coach and you're trying to, people are trying to find a reason to get you up out of town, they're going to point that to you and say, look, Bill, this is your fault. Mr. O'Brien, you're the reason that they're doing this. And he's like, I don't go home with those guys. Those guys live their own lives. They have their own families. They have their kids. They have the people that they love, that they spend their time with. They have their friends. That How does that fall back on me? When Ray Lewis did it, did John Harbaugh, when, when they said Ray Lewis tested positive for deer antler spray, did that come back on John Harbaugh? No, it did not. Because John Harbaugh has nothing to do with what Ray Lewis does outside of the facility. Even inside the facility, but really just in general. Outside of the facility, huh, that's not on John Harbaugh. 
Well, Bill O'Brien, he's out of town. Texans, they're still a mess. DeAndre Hopkins requests a trade. And now J.J. Watt has requested to be released, and he's he was released right away. It sucks. I don't like when players do what well, I just said. I don't like. I understand. I would love for people, for athletes, especially the really, really good ones, to stay in the city their entire career only because I like loyalty. I do understand why at times loyalty is not a thing because they ain't loyal to me. They ain't going to help me win a ring. I want to win a ring before I leave. I want to get up out of town. I completely understand that thought process. But there are also people out there that are saying the Deshaun Watson situation It's very similar to J.J. Watt's situation. And how is J.J. Watt's situation treated one way and Deshaun Watson's situation is treated differently? I've heard people bring race into this. Say, oh, J.J. Watt is white. Deshaun Watson's black. That's why they're they're, they're being treated differently. Um, Can I stop here and real quick and say something? Um, J.J. Watt's been in the league for 10 years. Um, Deshaun Watson is, I believe, about 25 or 26. Um, Deshaun Watson just signed a contract extension, and he needs to be traded, which is why he requested a trade. J.J. Watt can be released, and it would not be a hit on the salary cap for the team. So there is not the, the race card. I, I don't normally bring race into this, but I don't believe the race card can be utilized right now to say, ooh, J.J. Watt's being treated this way because of the color of his skin, and Deshaun Watson being treated this way because of the color of his skin i don't think that at all now you may say jay you're crazy you have lost your mind there's math there are financial implications for each move and if deshaun watson gets cut yes it's going to be hard for the texans financially via the salary cap lately over the next few years it's a whole lot easier to ship jj watt out of town based off his contract and where he is right now in the league in his tenure in the national football league there is a good chance deshaun watson is a texan next year because it's going to be hard to move the contract yes a lot of people want him but what the texans may ask for him in return it might be something that other teams are not willing to give up but this is not the only team in houston that has had problems lately We all think about the Houston Texans, that disaster, that debacle, that issue where, ooh, it seems like everything that's going on right now down there, it is a problem. Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets, yes, they have had some deep playoff runs for the past few years. James Harden had been there for a while, and he had done a phenomenal job of getting better and better and better, being an efficient score and a prolific score, one of the best scores in the NBA right now. But defense not really a thing for him. Even though they've gotten to at least one game seven, maybe two in the Western Conference Finals, they can't get over the hump and win that game. Bring in guys like Chris Paul. Bring in a guy like Russell Westbrook. You even brought in Carmelo Anthony. He only lasted for 10 games because your analytic mind and the people that crunch the numbers, they say, oh, we should evaluate you after a 10-game span, and that's how you're going to be the rest of the season. Sorry, another head scratcher. This may be a day full of head scratchers, guys. So you're telling me after a 10-game span, that's how you're going to evaluate a player with how they are in October, middle to late October, and in the beginning of November, that's how they're going to be in February, March, and April, and maybe in the playoffs, please give me a break. If that was the case, if that was the way things are going to be and the way things are in the NBA, well, after 10 games, we should go ahead and crown the NBA champion because the analytics say so. If you can't tell by the sound of my voice, I'm not a big fan of analytics at all. I think that they have their place, but when overutilized and overused, they can be a hindrance to the success of of your team houston rockets they got james harden up out of no james harden was there excuse me russell westbrook is gone you got carmelo is gone chris paul is gone john wall comes in boogie cousins comes in and all of a sudden james harden was he wearing a fat suit was he not wearing a fat suit i don't believe he gained all the weight that he showed in some of those in some of those warm-up pictures that were taken the one that comes to my mind is the one that um when the rockets played the the rockets played the hornets recently 
before James Harden was traded. It was either the last game or the second to last game he played there in Houston. James Harden looked big, y'all. He looked big. And one person even talked about how James Harden, his face wasn't bigger. His arms weren't bigger. His shoulders weren't bigger. It was all right there in his gut. And it sure looked like that boy was wearing some type of suit under his uniform to make him look bigger in warm-ups and, well, look a little hefty. Well, he did what was needed. He cried like a river, made himself look really bad at some of those post-game press conferences, had people that work in the studio covering the game say James Harden quit during the final minutes and moments of a game against the Pacers. It's not just the Texans, y'all. Houston might just be a sports town that has some issues. And before all of this... The Astros got caught cheating. <laughs> bang in the trash can. Bang, 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 bang. The Astros got caught cheating. Cheating. And then they put out a piss poor, embarrassing apology, thinking that it would suffice and thinking that people would let them off the hook. Well, ultimately, myself, I did not. You maybe did it. And there are other people out there that basically said, hey, look, y'all, y'all embarrass yourselves. Y'all ain't right. Y'all are crazy. Y'all are doing things that don't make sense. Y'all cheated. Y'all got caught. Don't come in here and give me some elementary apology. Be a man. Man up and make it make sense. Or don't apologize at all because if you're not sorry for what you did, I know that for the PR, for uh, the PR move that needs to be made, oh, maybe an apology there. No, y'all, no. That apology y'all put out there, (laughs) it was quite laughable because it was really, really bad. The Texans got issues. The Rockets got issues. The Astros got issues. I'm not saying, I'm not saying at all that this is all on the city of Houston and that they have some issues that they can't get over as a sports town. But if that's what happens over the past few years and if this dream continues, I'd understand because if things truly look like what's going on right now in Houston, the Texans, the Astros, the Rockets, they can't get right. The National Anthem has been a topic of discussion all year. 2021 is not that old. In all 2020 or most of 2020, the anthem has been a topic that when it's brought up, People, some people feel some type of way. Some people, when the anthem comes on, they have decided to kneel during the anthem because they don't agree with what has gone on in some communities in the U.S. of A. Some people, when the anthem comes on, they have decided to stand, not put their hand over their heart, just stand with their arms at their side. Some people, they have decided to continue what they have done their entire lives, hand over their heart the entire time the anthem is being played. There are people, when I've been at games, sure, you have been at games, People that talk during the entire anthem, not just softly. Some do it softly. Some do it at their their regular audible tone. And it's kind of annoying. It's very annoying. Why would you do that? It's very disrespectful when somebody is singing or when somebody is playing to go ahead and do that. Now, I know if you're at a concert, yes, you're going to sing. Yes, you're going to dance. Yes, you're going to do the things that you do at concerts. But during when the anthem is played, it has been a long-standing rule universal rule that you just don't talk you just don't talk at all we're honoring our country by playing the national anthem so we're not going to do that well mark cuban this may be something that many of you may not have heard about because recently when the discussion came out that mark cuban had decided to not play the anthem this year i had no idea the mavericks had not played the national anthem before any game that is played there in dallas no preseason game or a regular season game. The anthem had not been played. You see how crazy it is when things don't happen and nobody talks about it. Nobody has a problem with things they don't know about. But as soon as you announce something that is controversial, that is not happening right now, oh my goodness, everybody comes out and starts saying, providing their two cents about what you are doing. Yeah, you get your, people get their two cents out. You have to explain why you have done this. You go on TV shows and radio shows to explain why this maneuver has been done. And let's just let Mark Cuban say what he thinks he made this decision. These next words in this quote comes from the statement that Mark Cuban made 
in regards to the decision that he made. Quote, we respect and always have respected the passion people have for the anthem and our country. But we also loudly hear the voices of those who feel that the anthem does not represent them. We feel that their voices need to be respected and heard because they have not been. Our hope is that going forward, people will take the same passion they have for this issue and apply the same amount of energy to listen to those who feel differently from them. Then we can move forward and have courageous conversations that move this country forward and find what unites us, end quote. Well, I gotta say, Mark Cuban did a phenomenal job of laying out why the decision was made, who they talked to or who they listened to in regards with the, this decision being made, and what he feels these next steps are for the decision to come back to say, hey, I am making the decision to play the anthem inside the arena once again before Dallas Mavericks games. The interesting thing about this is shortly after Mark Cuban, well, at, for, shortly after it came out that the Mavericks weren't playing the national anthem, Adam Silver said the anthem must be played before games. Now, it's interesting because... Mark Cuban says he consulted with Adam Silver before Mark Cuban decided to not play the anthem before any game. Now, if he consulted with Adam Silver, and Adam Silver knew why Mark Cuban might or may or may not make this decision. Why is it coming out now that there have been 13 games played there where the Mavericks have been home, they're in Dallas, and the anthem has not been played, and now Adam Silver comes out and makes a statement that the anthem must be played before every game it, by every home NBA team. Um, somebody help this make sense to me. Um, because I understand, like, if I don't like something and I consult with somebody and I don't do that, say, say my boss... Um, I they I don't like something. Uh, I, I'm in a role of authority, and I can make some decisions. Well, I don't like the decision that may or may not be made. So I go to my boss and say, "Hey, boss. Well, um, I don't like this. I'm going to consult with you. Can we discuss this? I think I'm thinking about making a change." They gave me the pros and the cons in regards to the decision, but ultimately say it's up to you. If you don't want to make this decision or you want to change things, go right ahead and do it. And then 13 weeks go by, all of a sudden, somebody starts to be upset because the decision that was made 13 weeks ago. Now, this isn't the same time period, 13 games. There's more than 13 games played in 13 weeks, but hear me out. They don't like the decision, and they don't really say anything until they start getting some pushback and some backlash. And some people start making some noise about the decision that I made. Doesn't that seem a little odd to you? Yeah, and it ultimately does. Playing the anthem before sporting events, high school, college, pro. I don't know about middle school, probably middle school as well. I don't think they play before Little League games. I, maybe Little League Baseball, they might play it before the very, game, very first game of the day. I'm not sure about that. But playing the anthem before sporting events, it's been a tradition. It's just a tradition that we have in America before sporting events, no matter if it's uh, basketball, football, no matter if it's uh, motocross or supercross or hockey or golf or whatever it is, the anthem is played. Now, maybe not golf. I've never been to a, a golf tournament, so I don't know about that per se, but it's been a tradition that the anthem is going to be played. Is this something that's etched in stone that has to happen before every game? I don't. I personally don't think so. I have no problem with the anthem being played. I am still a person, probably one of the few, that stands at, during the anthem with my hand over my heart. That is something that I, that I have not stopped. People have said, Jay, will you kneel during the anthem? I said, no, I will not. I personally will not. Um, I think that I, I, me standing is my own decision. I me standing during the anthem with my hand over my heart. Um, that's showing the song and the country, the, the respect that they both have been given my entire life during this time period and really for history, for, 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 as, for a very, very long time. Hand over your heart, stand up with attention when the song is being played. That's what happens during the anthem. I'm not going to kneel uh, peacefully. That's just not me and my makeup. 
But I also don't think the anthem has to be played before games. I wouldn't lose sleep if the anthem wasn't played before sporting events. It would be odd. Not going to lie to you. It would be very, very odd. I recently went to a high school basketball game um, in Connorsville, Indiana. You say, Jay, where is Connorsville? It's in the middle of nowhere. Lawrence North High School, they were playing a basketball game out there. The number two team in the state of Indiana right now. So I said, hey, I have some extra time. How about I go to a game? The JV game, the anthem was not played Something that popped up in my head. I said, oh, no anthem. Okay, cool. And I don't believe the, the anthem was played before the varsity game either. So no anthem before JV. No anthem before varsity. I didn't have a problem with it. I really did not. I didn't at all. It cuts out a couple minutes, two, two and a half minutes. Um, maybe three in between the anthem being played, getting ready for the anthem, and then the tip of the varsity game. But I, I don't have a problem with it. I don't. I think I know people in our country that say, oh, the, the anthem needs to be played before every sporting event. Why? Because of tradition. Okay, why? I don't. I personally don't care, but I'm also not going to get up in a tizzy and get um, in a deep argument with somebody that says, no, it needs to be played. Okay, cool. That's fine. That's fine. The anthem, I think, should be played in some situations. Um, it's up for discussion about others, but I don't care if, if Adam Silver says the anthem needs to be played. So be it. Go right ahead and do it. Mark Cuban, I think the odd thing about the situation, Mark Cuban consulted with the commissioner. The commissioner knew the decision, or shortly after realizing the, the, the decision that Mark Cuban was going to make. And the commissioner did not say anything and forced him to play the anthem before games until somebody got upset. Cancel culture. Mark Cuban was a advocate and pushing some cancel culture and Adam Silver didn't like it if we went along with things that people said did not represent them in this country and said we're going to extend that we're going to cancel them we're going to cancel them we're going to cancel them ultimately we're going to run out of things to cancel because we're, the thing's going to come back at us and say oh well the thing I want to cancel it's a part of me and now I have to cancel that thing that's a, that's a part of me no nah. Not eventually, cancel, cancel culture will cancel itself out. Cancel culture is scary. What's also very odd, I won't say scary, but also very odd, is the way this whole thing went down. I'm sure Adam Silver knew about the decision by Mark Cuban to not play the anthem before games. But, he did not make the, the decision to force the move by Cuban to play the anthem before games until he got pushed back. Very weird, very odd, and occasionally scary place we are right now in sports we're, when we're letting outsiders dictate moves we might make and when we consult with people that can make the move forwards and the decision and they say, oh, well, here's the pros, here's the cons, so be it. And then when they get pushed back, they force you to do something that they might not agree with. Sportsman, in a weird state right now. I'm glad sports are back, but we're going to get a lot more of these stories over the next few months. Speaking of a story that we might not get more of over the next few months, Chris Hogan has decided to put his name and to potentially be drafted in the upcoming Premier Lacrosse League draft on March 25th. A football player going back to his roots the sport that he played in college, I'm here for. There are sport, there are sports, there are players in the NFL and other sports that play multiple sports during college. A lot of them were two and three or maybe four sport athletes growing up as a youngster. Maybe soccer, maybe baseball, maybe hockey, maybe basketball, maybe football, maybe some golf, maybe some tennis. I mean, I'm just naming some sports that people play. And people do this. Maybe they ran some track and field, 100-meter dash, 200-meter dash. Maybe they dominated the track. There are sports out there where people say, oh, I love this. I love that. Here's what I want. Here's what I might be. And ultimately, Russell Wilson could have played professional baseball, chose the NFL. Patrick Mahomes could have played professional baseball, chose the NFL. Tom Brady, professional baseball, chose the NFL. And there's numerous people out there that could have played multiple sports. Oh, Goldberg? We all remember Goldberg from the WWE. He was in the NFL. Played for the Vikings for a few years. Had a couple injuries. Also, he was not the best um, in the NFL um, at all. And then he also ultimately went to the WWE. The Rock. 
Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Before he became The Rock, he was a player, a football star, you might want to say, at the University of Miami during their glory days. Ultimately went to play in the NFL. Shortly after that, he entered. He was not there much longer. Went to the WWE, and the rest is history. There he was in the WWE for numerous years. Now he's an actor making a whole lot of money. So it's no surprise Kobe Bryant played soccer. Steve Nash played soccer. There's no surprise that there are guys out there. Allen Iverson played football. LeBron played football. I mean, I could, keep, I could keep going on and on and on. It's no surprise, literally no surprise, that a player in the NFL has roots and has a love for a second sport. It might just be odd that that sport is lacrosse. Think about how many people you know that play lacrosse, because I can think about right now, me, myself, and I, huh, I don't know anybody. Actually, I think I know a one guy, maybe two guys. I think there was a club team in high school and some guys that I, I played football with. They played the club sport via lacrosse. I think it was about 20 minutes away. I think it was in Carmel, Indiana. May have been Fishers, but I knew it was not close uh, as far as around the corner to where I went to high school in Indianapolis, Indiana. But not many people play lacrosse. I actually, I know a thing when I played lacrosse in high school. I could, I, as I keep talking and thinking, more things come to mind. But I don't know, I don't know many people that play lacrosse. It's a fun sport to watch at times. I have watched more collegiate lacrosse than professional lacrosse. And so I don't even know when professional professional lacrosse where it will be on tv what channel what station any of that what tv partner your boy doesn't know anything but i do like when i hear about an athlete saying hey i've been in the nfl for quite nfl for quite a long time i am 33 years old let's try let's go and let's plan to play lacrosse at the professional level played from 2007 to 2010 at penn state and i i'm here for it, man I am here. Uh, Chris Hogan was a mid midfielder for Penn State, scoring 29 goals as a junior and earning an all ECAC recognition. Go for it, man. These are only a few accolades when you haven't played something since 2010 and it's 2021. There's a lot of time wear and tear that maybe you would have gotten and been more accustomed to playing that sport then that you don't have now. But I, I'm here for it, man. I am here. The transition from football to lacrosse might not be as hard. You're used to getting hit. You're used to wearing some pads. You're going to be moving more freely. You won't have things uh, as constricting to you uh, in your legs uh, via the pants, which really aren't as constricting because they're made to maneuver with the, <laughs> the bodies. Then they're, they're made to mold to the body of the individual that is wearing them. But I'm all for it, man. Every now and then, some of you, you may and I may have a passion that is not what we're currently doing right now in life. Or we may have a hobby that we haven't done in a while. But say, life says, go right back and do that thing. Go back and do it. You have some time. Stop what you're doing right now. Go back and do something else that you love. We all have those hobbies. We all have those things that we love, that we enjoy, that we like about life. Because we're able to do numerous things that make us very, very happy. And if Chris Hogan, moving from the NFL to the Premier Lacrosse League, go for it. And there may be a time or two your boy may tune in or try to find a way to, to watch Chris Hogan play the lacrosse. Because I think it'll be a lot of fun to see what level and how good he is at that sport. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Jay Stevens Podcast. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. You can also send all of your emails to jstevenspod at gmail.com. Remember to always subscribe, rate, and review. It's a great way for people that are searching for a new podcast to listen to to come across this one. Then remember to always get the word out about the podcast via word of mouth. The things that we enjoy in life, we are more willing and somewhat wired to tell other people about. So no matter if this was your first episode or if you have been listening since episode number one, be sure to let people know about the podcast. This has been episode 175 of the JCOS podcast. I will see you next time.